typewriter that really stimulates my nostalgia gland. Hello everyone. It is Typewriter Tuesday, so you'll not be surprised that inside this snazzy case is a typewriter, but it is a very um, special typewriter for a few reasons, primarily because this typewriter was sent to me by a cousin of mine, and it had been owned by my uncle, who was my mother's uh, much older sibling, and he was a pastor in the Church of God, and uh, my mother has shared with me things that my uncle has written or had written, <clears throat> so I have uh, articles and poems that he wrote. He was a veteran of the Korean War and a fine man. I did not uh, know him super well. Uh, he didn't live near us. He was pastoring at some distance from us and the difference in age from him to my mother was significant. So uh, didn't know him, didn't have uh, opportunity to spend tremendous amounts of time with him. Uh, but he was a fine man and I appreciated so much when my cousin reached out to me uh, after his passing several years ago and asked if I would be interested in in having this typewriter. Uh, she knew that I was a collector and appreciator of typewriters and likely knew that I'm a sentimentalist. And um, so it was appropriate. And I, I just uh, very grateful to my cousin. So if you happen to see this, thank you. Kind of you to think of me. Uh, this almost a metallic... Case. I think it is uh, thin steel under here. And this is a similar case to what you would see on uh, Smith and Corona typewriters, but this is not a Smith Corona typewriter, or not exactly. I don't think you can angle this down a little bit here. We have the key still attached. And we have a plastic or bakelite, probably plastic, <coughs> excuse me, based on the age handle. We have these latches here to open it, and here, if that will stay, we have the typewriter. It is a tower. You can't see. Tower President 12. And this case is uh, very reminiscent of the Smith Corona Galaxy series, Classic 12, and Galaxy typewriters, of which I own a couple. But their cases were very similar, just not with that metallic paint job. They were generally black, but they were very thin steel, as this is, and it locks into the case in a very similar way. Uh, you can see right away this has a wider carriage, so that would have been an option. I'm not sure if the 12 indicates the size of the carriage, and therefore all President 12s would, would have the larger carriage, uh, or if <clears throat> this came also with a more standard size uh, carriage. Tower, the brand name here, is actually just a rebranding. This is, in fact, a Smith Corona machine. And it was made for sale in Sears and Roebuck stores. So Sears, your Sears catalog, you could order a Tower typewriter and uh, I love this. Let's see if I can zoom in here on the little logo. Kind of a nuclear age, space age logo. Very attractive. We've got the gold tower here in script. And let's take it out of its case so we can get a better look at it. First, I do want to point out, to remove it from its case, it locks into the bottom of this case. There's a little lever here that when you push, it releases it kind of violently, and then it just uh, 
sort of pulls out from these uh, tabs that are built into the bottom of the case. I'm not going to do it on camera because the weight of the lid will pull the entire thing over and it'll be a scene. So let's not do that. But before I get to the typewriter itself, there were a couple of things here in the bottom. It's always fun to find things in your typewriter cases or in your Bibles or whatever it is you find at thrift shops, used items, especially of a certain vintage. It's fun to find uh, items left by the previous owner, particularly so when you know the previous owner. There's some connection to their life. So we have uh, the box from a typewriter ribbon. We have a couple of brushes here. This uh, light red one probably was made for this typewriter or for a typewriter. Made in the United States of America, but it doesn't say any other details on it. But that would be for cleaning out the typeface, likely. And then a vintage Oral-B. Toothbrush. Similar purpose, I'm sure it was used for, because it's blackened with ink, presumably. And this stuff is like gold when you find it in typewriters. Correct type. Uh, typewriter opaquing film, it's called. It's basically white out on a sheet, on a plastic film. And you back over the word you want to erase and retype the word. It whites it out in a very clean manner. Stuff is hard to find. Uh, when you find it in the thrift shop, you're ecstatic. But up until the moment that I found this in the typewriter case, I was convinced that my Uncle Jimmy never made any mistakes. So this is... Actually, maybe none of it's been used. Boy. No, there's a... Uh, looks like he did. He made, he made some errors, apparently. Not very many, because there's a lot left in there. Okay, let's look at the typewriter. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, another look at it. Tower, President 12. It is in this kind of taupe and refried bean color. <laughs> I'm not sure what you would call it. It was probably a really fancy name from the factory. I don't know what that is. Again, built by Smith & Corona for Sears Roebuck. Uh, this was a pretty well-appointed machine for its time. This uh, model was made sometime between probably 1958-1960. It has the the body style that's more like a 58-59, 57-59 model, but the serial number and the name are more in line with a later 59-60 model. So I'm going to guess uh, somewhere around 58-59 probably data manufacturer on this. <clears throat> I'm not sure how old that would have made my Uncle Jimmy, but uh, that would have made me in the negative numbers age-wise. Uh, so we have this fancy pop-up rabbit ear paper support that is familiar among uh, Smith & Corona typewriters. And just by way of comparison, before I get too involved here. I have a similarly aged Smith & Corona typewriter. And you can see various similarities. It's hard to do with only two hands. There are its rabbit ears. The keyboard you can see is very similar in shape, although the color is different. But very, very similar machines. Uh, and very, very high quality machines. Really, some of the best designed typewriters ever made. Um, if you're going to have one typewriter to last you through your life, uh, a Tower or a Smith Corona of that vintage is... I mean, that will, that will suffice. <laughs> really, they're super well-designed, well-appointed machines. There's a touch control here that um, affects how quickly you can type or how much force is required to type. The serial number, if you're curious, 
If you find one of these, or if you came to this video because you're trying to find out more about your tower machine, you can see the serial number right in here. Probably can't see it, but it's on the uh, imprinted on the frame here. I've already uh, shared the paper support. Uh, what else do we have? I've got tab set and clear here on the keyboard rather than uh, on the back or up here. So you set the set a tab or clear a tab from here. <clears throat> There's the tab activator. This does have a, a one key. A lot of typewriters did not have a one key. You were expected to use the lowercase l for that purpose. It has option for three different line spacing choices. Single advance, two spaces, or three. <clears throat> it has the rather deluxe three rollers here on the paper, paper bale. Um, very, very luxurious. The rubber actually is still intact on these, but the platen is rock hard from age. Uh, ribbon change manual here, but it does have automatic ribbon reverse. It has three color option, black stencil, which means no ribbon use at all, and red. Although currently we have only a black ribbon in there. Let's see. Bell works fine and sounds great. The margin sets. Sorry, I am jiggling this thing to death. Whoa, okay. Margin sets. Here, press and slide, very simple. It's the best kind. These fancy magic margins and things of that character, um, not really useful, more gimmicky, I think. <clears throat> there is margin release here, so you can go to way past the margin on either end. Uh, there's a something here. That is interesting. Boy, this is hard to do one-handed. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Model number 8711200, delivered to any Sears retail or mail order store for service. Sears Roebuck and Company, made in USA. So don't send it to Smith Corona. Don't try to take it apart yourself, although now you take this to your local Sears. Are there even Sears? I don't even know. They wouldn't know what to do with it. So take it apart yourself. Although if you need to repair it, I'd be surprised. A couple of really fancy features of this typewriter <clears throat> that set it apart, other than the overall terrific build quality and um, very comfortable to type on. Something Smith Corona did that a few other typewriter manufacturers did that was an amazing bit of engineering that is not going to be easily shown here. But I'm going to try. The keys, when you depress them, do not move in an arc as you would expect. It's on a long arm, so most typewriters, you press the key and it'll swing down and in because that's the way the lever works. These are designed in such a way that it doesn't move down and in, it moves relatively straight down. It's hinged in such a way that you, your finger doesn't have to follow it down and in, but just straight down, which you wouldn't think would make a big difference when you're typing, but when you're typing a lot, it really does. Uh, it makes a difference. It, it lowers the fatigue with typing. All right, we 
have these uh, fingers that hold the paper down as well as the paper bale. Usually you don't get both, but in this, uh, nothing was too good for the owner of a tower typewriter. It had all the bells and whistles, everything you would want in a typewriter. Notice here we have a little bit of damage on the platen knob. I'm sure I can find a replacement because Smith Coronas and towers were so numerous. We have soundproofing here all throughout. Um, I left this intact as is when I got it from my cousin. So it's a little bit dirty from age, but uh, didn't really have to do anything with it. It's in terrific shape, will last another hundred years at least. Beautiful example of American manufacturing. I say that a lot on this channel, but man, they don't make them like they used to. This is just a well-designed machine. Does exactly what it's supposed to do, and will keep doing that for years. Um, just gorgeous. And the personal connection to me is what really makes it, it puts it over the top. This will stay in my collection forever. Thanks to my cousin again. Thank you, Uncle Jimmy, for picking a great machine and taking good care of it and pouring your soul into it. Um, man, just, just love this. Beautiful machine. Thanks for staying with me here on this Typewriter Tuesday. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll try to make this more of a regular thing. I know it's been a while since I've looked at a typewriter, but uh, this was a special one. I wanted to make sure to get this one out there. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you here again next time.